Hey everybody! Today, Rado runs through Saloon Tycoon, which is a rootin' tootin' Old West saloon simulation where players are trying to build up the best saloon and score a lot of points along the way. We'll be doing a two-player run through of it today so you can see what it's all about. Over here is uh, where I'm building up my saloon, and over here is Jen's. At the beginning of the game, we've got an unfinished saloon. We've got this saloon room, although it can't be considered complete until we have collected supplies and put them into every supply slot. Once I get four supplies and put them here, this room is completed and I score seven points for having a functional big room. But that's only the beginning. Over the course of the game, I've got additional land that I can build outwards. I can build guest rooms and poker rooms, stables, pantry, brothel, theater, whiskey still, etc., etc. So I can build outward, although the further out I build, the more money it costs, but the more victory points I get for building um, out. But in addition to building out, you can also build up. You can build a second and a third story to your building. So, and that's always going to be cheaper because you, once you've actually claimed the land, you don't have to pay anything to build upwards. So I'm going to show you how this works in a two-player run-through. Here's my spot, Jen's spot. We both start with no money, or with no points, I mean, but with three gold and an income of one because our building is exactly one tile big. Every time I add another tile, whether it's a big one or a small one, my income increases, which lets me build even more and more. Also, as part of setup, everybody gets a starting hand of tycoon cards. These are your action cards that let you do all kinds of stuff. And four secret claim cards. These are secret objectives. Now, everybody gets four, but they have to pick just two that they're going to shoot for. So I could shoot for Reach for the Sky, the Audition, Poker Knight, and the Gold Digger. I've got to choose two of these four. And you can see how many points they're worth at the end of the game. And what I have to do, I mean, to get the Audition, I have to have Purdy Nelly and Moonshine Aggie both hanging out at my place, and that'll get me six points. If I have two roof tiles, which means I have completed three stories, um, I can reach for the skies because I have a thumping structure that gets me six points. Poker Knight. If I have Doc Sanders and any other male character, I'll be getting two points per male character who hangs out at my saloon. And Gold Digger. Have Miss Watson and Phineas Philbottom, uh, Philbottom hanging out here. Uh, she's keeping his company, but you ain't sure what she's hoping for. All righty. So what does that mean? Well, there are a bunch of characters. There are eight citizens and four outlaws. And these people will come hang out at your saloon if you build certain buildings or if you achieve certain milestones, like Phineas Pillbottom here, who was mentioned on one of my things. He's a blowhard who says he owns half the town. As soon as one of us, either Jen or I, have collected five supplies, the little brown cubes, Phineas Philbottom immediately comes over and hangs out and becomes a noose around our neck because from that point on, as long as he hangs around, future supplies we buy cost more than normal. So it's bad to have outlaws hanging around, but it may turn out that it's good because you need them hanging around depending on what your secret goals are. Now, in addition to the secret goals, everybody has two, there are public goals. There's a huge deck of these goals. I mean, I mean, here's tons and tons of public and secret goals that will get randomized every time you play. In this game, we've got Night Shift, Sin City, Ladies Club, and Gambler's Paradise. There's a race to complete these. First person to achieve whatever it is scores those points. And so what I want to do is I want to pick secret objectives that kind of work well with these public objectives. So Ladies Club have three female characters. So, so actually, if I go for Ladies Club and the audition, which requires Purdy Nelly and Moonshine Aggie, there's two female characters right there. Ladies Club would just mean a third. So I think I want to keep audition. I'm going to keep that and try to go for getting a bunch of ladies to come to my saloon so I can achieve both of those. Let's see. Have two roof tiles, so I want to build high. Um, get uh, Watson and uh, Pillbottom, Doc Sanders, and male characters. There's Watson. Ooh, the night shift. This one's actually a little silly. Uh, ain't a man in this nation who works harder than Miss Lobelia. Lobelia is actually named Lobelia Watson. She shows up at our, you know, ha hangs out at our saloon if we are the player to build the schoolroom. So yeah, she's a school marm. But here's the thing. After we build the schoolroom and get her to show up, if we also build the brothel, well, apparently, Miss Lobelia is going to work the night shift as well. So there's some kind of adult humor sprinkled in there, uh, you know, some subtle innuendo. So, um, and the thing is, she's a female character. If I get her, then I, I, if I get, you know, if I'm going, 
So maybe all women. Yeah, so the gold digger wants Miss Watson as well. So that makes sense. Let's say I'm going to go for those. So I'm giving up on trying to have Doc Sanders and other male characters or trying to build really high with two roof tiles. So these get removed. Jen, meanwhile, she had to do the same thing. She had to pick what four she's uh, keeping. Casing the joint. Of course, this is all done in secret. Shocking expose, the cover-up. Oh, look at this. Um, uh, the cover-up needs uh, Lucky Lucy Allen and Phileas Pillbottom and Lucy Allen and Sydney Smythe. Lucy Allen, she is a reporter. She shows up if somebody builds the printing press. So these two work together. If Jen goes after this, goes for the printing press, she's halfway to completing both of those. And this one's 16 points. That's a pretty big deal. Let's go for that. So Jen's got her secret. Uh, so she definitely wants to get this printing press built ASAP, although that's going to be tough. It's expensive. It costs 12 gold to build the printing press. So you got to save up for it. And you can't build it if you've ever built the laundry. Because uh, Lucy Allen won't build a printing press if there's a lot of damp air um, because of the laundry, because then the... Newspaper is ruined. So, anyway, so Jen wants to get that printing press built, and then she also wants to get Phineas Philbottom and Sidney Smythe, who are both villains, who are both bad guys. But if she can, uh, you know, bear the weight of them, she has potentially a lot of points to score here at the end of the game. So these are her secret goals. I've got my secret goals. And, let's see, we are now ready to start playing. And I'll go first. So, let's see, what are my tycoon cards? i got Supply Wagon the Gambler, and some J Frontier Justice. And we'll worry about what's in Jen's hand later. Okay, so on your turn, here's just a nice little summary card. Tells you everything you need to know. First thing you do is you get income. At the beginning of the game, because we have exactly one tile, that means our income is one. So I just made one gold. I got four gold. That's enough to build a kitchen, or a pharmacy, or the laundry, but not the pantry. But I could build a building room, et cetera, et cetera. So I've done my income. Next, I get to do one of these actions, uh, a tycoon action, it's called. And a tycoon action could be, I could just get two more gold, so I have some more money. I could draw two more tycoon cards, so I have more actions I can do. I've already got three. I could play a tycoon card, so I could play one of these. And that's really the main thing you want to be doing on your turn is generally either play a tycoon card to get some really cool benefit, or the next thing, build a tile. If you've got the money and you've met the prerequisites, you can build any of these tiles. Now, these ones, there's multiples of these. You could build multiple billiard rooms and guest rooms and kitchens. But these are the special ones. There's only one of each. Once somebody builds the brothel, that's it. Nobody else can build it. For any of the specials, when you when somebody builds the jail, that means Sheriff Reeve come to them. And what was your name? Uh, Lucy Allen shows up for the printing press. So we know Jen is, or, and I don't know it, but Jen is definitely trying to get that thing built. I've already forgotten. What's my thing? Oh, I want Miss Watson and Purdy Nelly and Moonshine Aggie and Phineas Philbottom. Right, so I want, uh, Miss Watson means I need to build the school, which means I cannot build a poker room because then if, if I build a poker room, she will never show up. Now that's unfortunate because Gambler's Paradise gives four points for the first player to build two poker rooms. Now the thing is, after I build the school room, it's okay for me to build a poker room afterwards. Once she's already moved in, it's too late. She can be upset with the, uh, with the poker room. So. So the thing is, I, what I can't do with my four bucks is build, well, I, I need six bucks anyway to build a poker room. I can't build that right now, though, because I need to save up for that school room, because I need to get her, so, I, let's see, uh, but, so I, all right, I mean, back to what I can do. I could build a tile, or I could bribe a character. Now, that's another interesting thing, too. You know, let's say Jen, some, at some point, builds the school room before I get a chance to, and then uh, Miss Watson comes over to her. What I can do anytime I want, I can pay six bucks to bribe a character to either leave Jen and come to me, or leave me and go to Jen. If there's somebody hanging around that I don't want, because there are a noose around my neck, I can send them over to Jen by bribing them, or I could... So, it's not the end of the world if I don't get the school room built, and Jen does, because I could always bribe Miss Watson to come over and start working the night shift. Alrighty. So, I get to do one of these actions. And in addition to doing one of these actions, I can do as many of these free actions as possible. And the free actions are complete an objective. So if I get all these done, I could do all four of these. But you know, it takes a long time to get all these things built and whatnot. And spend two bucks for supplies. And that, you know, I've got four. If I spend two, I could get a cube. Once I've got four cubes and I finish this, this room is completed. And that means uh, because it's a big room, I will score seven points. And once the room is completed, I could build a second room. I could build a second story. So there's that. Righty. Okay, so that's my option. What am I going to do? Well, I think for starters, 
You know what? It's a root and tootin' game. There's a lot of take that built into this. I think we're going to start out. I'm going to play a tycoon card. We're going to have some frontier justice. I'm going to settle my debts, steal a total of three gold from other players in any combination. So since Jen started the game with three, I'm going to steal it from her. She's got none. Boom. Like I said, this is a rough game. There's a lot of stealing and all kinds of rootin' tootin' ruckuses that happen. So that was my core action. I played a tycoon card. Now, I can do additional actions, which is complete these, but there's no interaction that says, hey, have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven gold. So it's not like that's going to do any good. And I've got enough money, I could actually build some stuff, but I've already done my one core action. So, do I... Now, here's the thing. Jen might have a Frontier Justice card, and she might steal from me. So before my turn is over, maybe I want to spend some of this to build some supplies. I'm going to take a chance. I'm going to hope that Jen doesn't have any Frontier Justice, because I'd like to save up. I mean, I'd like to, if, next, if I could save up over a couple more rounds, or next turn, the supply wagon will give me four more gold. Then between that, I'll have enough money to build the schoolroom and uh, get Miss Watson to come on over. But you know what? I mean, building these one-times or to get the special characters, you can always bribe them later. In the meantime... You know, you could pay less money and build the kitchen. The kitchen doesn't bring a special character. The kitchen, after you build it, it costs four bucks to build, immediately lets you... I mean, this would be your core action you do, but after you build it, you immediately get to play a card as well. So you effectively get to do two actions a turn if you build a kitchen. Um, right. The billiards room, if I build that afterwards, I can do any action I want. I can do a second tycoon action. So I could build a billiards room and a second thing. The guest room, I could draw another tycoon card and then play a tycoon card. The poker room, it costs me six, but I get four back, etc., etc. So all the different rooms have different functions if I build them. Um... But I'm not gonna. I'm, I'm gonna save my money. I'm gonna hope Jen doesn't steal anything from me. And my turn is over. At the end of my turn, if there's no supplies cubes remaining, that triggers the end of the game. So, once all these cubes have been gobbled up, because we need to actually. I mean, my room is incomplete. Once I get the supplies and finish this, I score points. Once all the supplies are gone, that triggers the end of the game. So we're a ways off from ending it. Now what the heck? I'll, I'll I'll go on a. No, I want to save up to be able to buy. Yeah, I'm fine. All right, okay. So I'm not going to build anything. I just played a card, stole some stuff from Jen, and now it's her turn. And right off the bat, she's broke. What does she do? Beginning of her turn, she always gets some income. So she has one gold. She's not going to be building anything. Now, I haven't actually looked at what she's got. She's got the Preacher, the Gambler, and the Builder. So she can play this. This would get her four gold and would let her immediately do another Tycoon action. All the icons, what they mean is over here, perform any Tycoon action. So... I think Jen's going to start out, she's going to be the builder. I was, went for some Frontier Justice, she's going to be the builder. That gets her four gold. One, two, three, four. So she's got five now, and she gets to do another action. And with five gold, I think that's going to be her for her second action, her bonus action. She'll build something. Right. So what is she going to build? What does she need? She wants to build that printing press, but she doesn't have 12 yet, so she'll come back to that later. And actually, she, again, she doesn't need the printing press. She just needs Lucy Allen. It'd be nice if she builds it, but she can get it other way. So in the meantime, she's got five bucks. What is she going to spend? That means she can afford the pharmacy, the laundry, or the kitchen, or the billiards room. Hmm. I think Jen will start out by building a, a laundry. Okay, this is going to cost her four gold. So she's almost broke. And it costs her four. And so she now places this um, on any of these side spaces. She'll go ahead and put it right here. And for building it, her bonus is she gets to draw two more Tycoon cards. So now she's got Gold Rush and Prospector as well. And she flips this. Now, now she's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Need for seven supplies. Once she has three supplies and puts these on, she will immediately score four points for f finishing this small building. So that was Jen's turn. She actually built something. And more importantly, now that she's got two tiles, her income has increased. Now she makes two gold per turn instead of one. All right, that was Jen's turn. My turn. Okay, I get one income. And so what do I got again? I've got five, six, seven, eight. So, I mean, heck, I could get, make some more money. But with eight bucks, maybe I should go on ahead and uh, build something up nice. Like... What would I want to do? All right, what was I wanting to build? Oh, I want to build the schoolhouse, the schoolroom. I need 10. I'm almost there. Also, I need to be thinking about what do I need to do for this? All right, to Sin City, I need a poker room, a billiards room, and the whiskey still. But if I want to get a poker room, which is needed for Sin City and Gambler's Paradise, I need to build the schoolroom before I can go for either of those. 
Right. So actually, I, okay, I don't think I'm going to build anything. I'm going to I'm going to get my schoolroom built first, so that after that I can start building up poker rooms and try to have the best of both worlds. So that means this turn, my core action, I'm going to play another tycoon card, and it'll be. I see. I could play the supply wagon. That'll give me some money and two supplies, so I'll be almost done building my saloon. Or I could go with the gambler, which means I draw two cards and play one. But I might draw two cards that are useless to me, so that is a bit of a gamble. But what the heck? Let's have some fun. Let's let's gamble. This is my core action. I draw two. Play one and discard one. So I got the stagecoach and more frontier justice. Wow. So I could steal, but right now Jen only has one gold. So that's not very good. So I imagine I'm going to discard frontier justice and go for the stagecoach. March my word. Trouble always comes uh, in on the stage. So what do I get to do with this? I get to do two tycoon actions now. So I'm playing this. That's two more tycoon actions. All righty. So um, what are those I can? Well, let's see. So, um, two more Tycoon actions. That means, I, well, two more actions. What the heck? I'll play my Supply Wagon now to get me four more gold and two Supply. Boop, boop. And I get one more action. Amazing. So, although now here's an interesting problem. What do I got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. By doing that Supply Wagon, I got over ten gold. And as soon as somebody has ten gold, Flatfoot Fleming shows up and starts draining their income for the rest of the game until you bribe them to go away. So here's the thing. I did not want to have 10 gold. So here's the way I could to ensure that I, there was no... Because, you know, I gambled. I didn't know exactly what was going to happen. But before I ever played that, um, that, that gambling card that led to the stagecoach, that led to the supply, etc., etc. Before I did any of that, I think the first thing I did is, what the heck, let's say I spent, because you can do your free actions before your main action. First thing I did before anything else was, I spent one, two, three, four to get two supplies. Let's just say I had done that. Because then I was in less danger of actually getting 10 gold, which would have made Flatfoot Fleming come. That would have been bad. So first of all, first thing I did was, I paid some supplies. And so hooray. Then. I gambled. I drew some cards. And that led to the stagecoach, which led to the supply wagon. And hey, when I got all that, look at this. I didn't go over 10. Oh, I'm so smart. Retroactively. Um, I also completed this, so I immediately score seven points. Hooray! I'm seven, although I, I right, and so that I get one more action, because remember, that stagecoach gave me two bonus actions, so I can do something else now. What do I still got? One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight. If I had 10, I'd build the schoolroom now, but I don't. And here's the thing. Next turn, I know I'm going to make one buck, so I don't have to worry about going over. So what do I want my last action to be? My action could be just to get two more bucks, but then at the start of the next round, I'd get one more and I'd go over and flat foot, so I don't want to go over 10. Once somebody eventually does go over 10 and accepts flat foot, then you, nobody has to be worried about going over 10 anymore because once she's out, she's out. So I think the, my last action, I will draw two more Tycoon cards just so I have more flexibility. Stagecoach and Prospector. That was a very busy turn. Wow. Okay. Over here to Jen. First of all, she gets two income because she actually built something last turn. And now she's going to get to do one action plus bonus actions. Gold Rush. Make eight bucks, but all other players earn two. Wait a minute. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, yeah. Jen's going to call for a gold rush. Although, oh, no. No, no, no. Okay, first of all, first thing, before Jen plays her card, she's going to pay two to get some supplies. So she's starting to work on her laundromat. Now she's down to one. Then she will have a gold rush, which gets her eight. Five, six, seven, eight. So that puts her at nine. All other players earn two. So... I just hit 10, and you know what that means, folks. So Jen had a very well-timed gold rush. She has a lot of, she's done her core action, and now, before her turn is over, she could do some bonus actions. I think she'll um, spend, oh, one, two, three, four, to get two more supplies and finish her laundromat. So a small building immediately scores her four points. She is on the, with four, and so that's pretty cool. She's got five left over, and that was her turn. My turn. Hey, first thing I get is one income. Boom. I just hit 11, thanks to Jen's gold rush. And so Flatfoot shows up. And now this means from now on, my um, income drops by one. Receive one less gold during the income phase. Yikes. Uh, so that's not good. All right. Now remember, I could always bribe Flatfoot to go away, but I need to save up six bucks for that. Now on the flip side, well, um, 
I got my money, so what the heck? I'm going to spend, I have 11 bucks, I'm going to spend 10 of it to build the schoolroom. I'll build it right over here. And um, I can build it because I don't have a poker room. I just spent 10. And so Miss Watson comes over and joins. Now, if Miss Watson is still with me at the end of the game, um, oh, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. I'm sorry, no, no. Um, she doesn't come to me yet. Right now, I've built the schoolroom. And it cost me 10. It doesn't do me anything immediately. But after I get the supplies to finish it, then Miss Watson will join me. She's worth five points at the end of the game. And, um, and uh, more importantly, she's crucial to the gold digger and the audition. And for me, ladies club and the night shift. So she's going to be a very busy lady if all goes to plan. So that was my big turn. I made some money. Flatfoot showed up. Oh, also, because I've now got a second thing, my income has increased to two, but I'm going to be losing one every round of Flatfoot. Ah, Flatfoot. All right. So anyway, so that was my turn. All righty. I, I did a build. Now it is Jen's turn. First of all, she gets her two income. So she's got seven. And let's see, she's got the preacher. That lets her buy a special tile without having to worry about the restrictions. Like, um, you know, so this is interesting. If Jen had already built a laundromat, normally she wouldn't be able to build a printing press. But with the preacher, she'd be able to ignore the restriction and build anyway. So that's actually really handy. The gambler, you saw me use that. Draw two tycoons, play one, discard the other. The prospector gets six bucks. Now that I've got Flatfoot, Jen doesn't mind going over the 10 gold limit because... So maybe she just wants to get some more money so she can start building big. Yeah, what the heck? I think Jen's just going to keep it easy. She's going to prospect, make six gold. All right. And so now she's got 13 next turn. Uh, well, And she could spend some of this now to start building her, but she'll worry about that later. And even if I steal three from her, she's not too bothered right now. So that was Jen's turn. My turn. Hey, I get two. No, I only get one because of Flatfoot. So now I'm having to build up my empire pretty slowly. So what am I going to do? Well, I could call on the stagecoach. That would let me do two more actions. Or I could do the prospector. I think I'm going to do that myself. I'm going to get six gold also. All righty. And so that was my whole turn. Unless I want to spend one, two, three, four, five, six. I've got six now. And then Miss Watson joins me. The schoolroom will be finished. But I don't have to worry about that right now. I could always, I could build this anytime I want. And she's going to show up. Now that I've built the schoolroom, it's okay for me to go on ahead and build the poker room. So I think I am going to build. I am going to... No, no, I'm not because I did the prospect. I made some money. So I'm not going to do anything. I'm saving my money. Next turn, I'm going to build my first poker room um, because I've already got the schoolroom built. And then if I get a second poker room, I'll have a gambler's paradise and score four. And I don't even know if Jen's even thought about that. But anyway, so that was uh, my turn. Jen's turn. Two more gold. Look at all this money she's got. Oh my gosh. All righty. I think it's time for Jen to start building. And let's see here. I think Jen is going to go on ahead and pay five, six. Oh no, I say. She's going to build a poker room, folks. Um, now, that means we are racing and Jen's ahead of me in the race to get the poker, the double poker rooms built for the Gambler's Paradise. No! Now, Jen's got a bit of a problem, though. Uh, it cost her six to build this. After it's built, she'll get four back. But in the meantime, she can't build up because she hasn't completed the bane, and she can't build a big thing on half of a small thing. If she had a second small thing and it was complete, she could build a big on two smalls, but she can't build this up, so she has to build out. That means if she builds here, it'll cost her an extra five, but get her three points, or she can build here, which will cost her an extra two and get her one point. I think she'll just build over here. That's gonna cost her an extra two, but that scored her one point. So she's almost caught up with me, and she's got her first floor poker room. But remember, this is how, uh, you know, so. And Jen's got enough on her next turn to build her other poker room, and so I think she's going to get Gambler's Paradise ahead of me. Uh, curses. And, uh, right, so that was her main thing. She just built, and hey, she's got a third tile, so her income has increased again. Back to me. First thing, I get two minus one. I get one income. I was about to build my first poker room, but now it's too late, and I wonder if it's worth even pursuing. Um, let's see. Well, I still do. Um, to, to have Sin City, the place full of devilry and other goings on, I need a poker room, a billiards room, and a whiskey still. There's only one whiskey still in the game. Whoever gets the whiskey still is the only person who can build this. It costs 12, plus you need a pharmacy. Can't have a whiskey still without the ingredients on hand. So you know what I think I'm going to do is, I'm going to go ahead and build a pharmacy so I can build a whiskey still in the future so I can go for Sin City, now that I've kind of given up on Gambler's Paradise because Jen's clearly going to beat me to it. So what's a pharmacy cost? My core action, I'm going to do that. That's going to cost me four. 
And after I do it, I get a bonus action on top of that. Now, where am I going to build this? Uh, I don't want to pay extra, so I'll just build it right here in the only place. If I build over here, it would cost me extra. I'm just going to build it right here. All right. And for building it, I get now one more tycoon action, which could be another build. But now I've only got five bucks, which is not enough for the whiskey still. I could just go on ahead and make two gold, but I think for my other action, hmm. I could go on ahead and do the stagecoach right now, but that would be to do two actions, and I don't really have a lot of actions I can do. So I think my, my second action is going to be, I'm just going to draw some more tycoon cards. Storekeep and no good troublemaker. This is kind of nasty. Move one character card that has already been collected by any player. So next turn, I could play the no good troublemaker to scare... And Norman, remember, I could pay six to bribe Flatfoot Fleming to go away, but instead I could say, you're a no good troublemaker, and just scare her away to hit Jen's income instead of mine. So that was my turn. I did two actions, and I'm on a different path than Jen. Meanwhile, over to her. She, score, she makes three. And, um, let's see. So she needs a second poker room. Dee, dee, dee. She could just go ahead and do it right now. It would cost her six uh, plus seven more or five more. And but Does she actually have enough for that? No, she's only got ten. So she doesn't have enough for her second poker room to get that done. Actually, is that true? Instead... If she did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nope. If she built uh, enough to build up, she still wouldn't have enough. So she can't get her second poker room done right now to complete Gambler's Paradise. So she's got to decide what else is she going to do. Um, or does she just go back to saving up for the printing press? Or does she spend some money to start getting um, these rooms built? Like she could just go on ahead and spend six, seven, eight. before. And, and now this is free. This isn't her core action. One, two, three, four, and boom. She has just finished her poker room. And now she could build upwards instead of having to build outwards. So it costs less to build in the future. And having finished this, just got her seven points. So that just put her up to 12. Yeehaw! All right. And so, and that wasn't her core action. That was a bonus action. Building supplies is a bonus action. So her core action, she could play one of these cards. She could draw more cards. She could just make some money. With two gold, she can't really build anything. Let's see. The Gambler. Yeah, I think she feels like gambling. She, this is her core action. Draw two tycoon cards, play one, discard the other. She got another gambler and an outlaw. Look at two tycoon cards from one player, keep one, and return the other. So, Jen could gamble again, or she could steal a card from me. Hmm. I think, yeah. She's not going to gamble again. She drew uh, two, she's keep one. She's the outlaw. All right, and she doesn't get to play that right now, right? So, I think the gambler, draw two cards. No, play one. All right, so... She is now playing the outlaw, which means she looks at my two tycoon cards and keeps one. All right. Oh, she looks at two of my three. So let's see, which one she get? She'll look at this one and this one. And what did she see? She sees my store keep and my no good troublemaker. She's going to keep that because she knows if I had that, I would have pushed flat foot. I get it back. And she's like, no. So now in the future, if she gets a, a villain on her, and if wait, hold on a second. Oh, crap. I totally forgot. Remember how as soon as I had 10 gold, Flatfoot showed up? These other outlaws are always waiting as well. As soon as somebody got five um, supplies, Phineas showed up. That's Jen. She's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, she bought all these at once. So, as, after she did this, Phineas showed up. From now on, it costs her three for every supply instead of two. Um, Moonshine Aggie is going to show up as soon as somebody has five tiles. And then it becomes more difficult for that person to play Tycoon cards. Sidley Smythe. Oh, this one showed up as well. As soon as somebody recruits a citizen, nobody's done that yet, Sydney shows up and hangs around that place, and Sydney is just worth five points, at, lo losing five points at the end of the game. Although, if I recall, as it turns out, Jen wants Sydney at the end of the game because that's crucial for her to get 16 points. So Jen doesn't mind getting Sydney, and in fact, um, you know, actually, you know, if, if I ever get Sydney, she would hope that I would bribe Sydney to go away. So because she secretly wants Sydney, because she wants the newspaper to write a shocking expose about Sydney. So that means she needs Sydney hanging out at her place, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So anyway. So she uh, gambled, she stole from me, and she also built on some stuff, but that means Phineas Pillbottom has shown up, and that was the end of her turn. Did she get her income? I think she did. Anyway, back to me, and I'm still only getting one income, but I'm slowly building back up, and 
I think, folks, I'm going to stop right there because that should give you a pretty good idea of what Saloon Tycoon is all about. The game keeps going. Uh, we keep building upwards and outwards, uh, scoring more and more points, getting more and more special abilities, completing more and more objectives until every one of these cubes is used. That triggers the end, and then whoever has the most points wins. And, uh, and it's, you know, by the time you build up, you've built out, you've built up several times. Once you complete your third story, you get to put a roof on top of that building, which is worth a bonus four points. And this is free. Nor, you know, as soon as you finished your top room, you get the roof for free, which is just guaranteed bonus points. And heck, sometimes there's objectives for having a certain number of roofs, etc., etc. That's it, folks. Uh, so now, if you'd like to hear some final thoughts about Saloon Tycoon, you can hit the eye in the top right corner of the screen or follow the show notes in five, four, three, two, one.